Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman, and I break down the world's most exciting businesses so that both you and I can grow ours faster. And today we are talking about my favorite newsletter, The Hustle. The Hustle is a daily newsletter that was started I don't know, several years ago, and uh, uh, it is profitable. It makes a lot of money. It was acquired by HubSpot. So it's got 2 million daily subscribers, more than 2 million daily subscribers. And they've spun uh, another business off of this uh, of this audience that they have, this daily audience that they have. So I highly respect the business. It's a great newsletter. It's highly entertaining. And I wanted to talk about it. And I wanted to dive into you know, basically why it's such an amazing business and um, how I can learn from it and, and tell you about what we're doing to sort of copy what they're doing and how you can do the same. But if you go to the hustle.co, you can see what they, uh, what they are. They're a daily newsletter. Now, let me clear the room a little bit here. Uh, the elephant in the room. Newsletters, right? In the world of advertising and marketing, we always recommend that companies don't call their newsletters newsletters anymore because the term newsletter is like a 1999 term. But the hustle is proving that wrong. And they are quite literally a modern newsletter. Every day, they do a newsletter that covers the coolest shit that's happening in the world of business and tech and uh, you know in that kind of entrepreneur space. But they do it in a really unique way. And in my opinion and I think you can agree with me once I'm done, there's one reason why it's successful. Because there's millions of newsletters out there, right? Well, so let's go ahead and take a look at the latest. They publish their newsletter right on their website, which you might be thinking, why? Because they want people to go to the email, but I'll tell you in just a second. Okay, so here's a, I don't know if this is the latest one. doesn't look like it's the latest one, but, oh wait, yes it does, 15th. So here's exactly what it looks like in your inbox. It looks just like this. It looks, looks exactly the same. Okay, so what they do is they have a little hook, something cool. Like they don't elaborate on it. It's just basically like here's this bit of information that's kind of cool. Then they do a little breakdown of the email. Um, they do a call to action. So go over and listen to the podcast. They have a podcast called My First Million. Um, and then they do the main topic right here. So this is about NIL, which if you don't know what that is, it's name, image, and likeness. It's basically college athletes can get paid as influencers by brands. They can have sponsorships and stuff like that. So they go over the big topic and then they go into some sort of smaller snippets. So here's a couple uh, beer wars. Molson Coors will run its first Super Bowl ad in 30 years after Anheuser-Busch declined to renew the category exclusively agreement exclusivity agreement it has had since 1989. Guess that means no more Clydesdales. That is actually really interesting news. Um, and then they go into some other like charts and things like that. Uh, some like detailed sort of analysis, similar to I do on this show. Um, it keeps going super long form, right? So here's some things they collected from around the web. I, I sort of call this useless information. that's highly entertaining. Uh, shower thoughts. So just some bits of cool information, right? And then quick little survey. Did you like it? Uh, but the reason why they do so well, the reason, oh, here's a little pop-up. So good marketing right here. So I was just, this is called exit intent. So this pops up before you go because they don't want me to leave. Or if I'm going to leave, they want to make sure they capture my, capture my email. They don't know that I'm already a subscriber. However, um, let me get back here. So the reason why they do so well is not because the information that they're curating, because if you break this business down, it's basically, oh, you're just taking news from all over the world and you're just putting it into 25 words, <laughs> right? Like those are like the snippets. That's the, that's the business model. But the reason why it's amazing is because of the copywriting. The copywriting is short, descriptive, often witty, sometimes humorous, uh, definitely trendy. So they use emojis where possible. They use GIFs, um, you know, in most of the featured images. So they're, they're presenting this information in a way that most other media companies don't do. If you go to Forbes or you go to CNN or you go to you know, Fox News or TechCrunch or wherever, they're, they're journalists. They're going to write it in a way that's journalistic, you know, research-driven. It's not necessarily fun and exciting and 
tongue in cheek, but the hustle does it that way. And they clear out all the fluff, all the stuff you don't need to know, all the details and things like that. And they just give you the bit of information that allows you to go on the, with the rest of your day, knowing that Molson Coors is going to now probably be the featured beer Super Bowl commercial because Budweiser may or may not be in there, right? Just you don't need to know all the other 3,000 words that probably the original article wrote. They present it in a fast and funny way. So it's convenient, right? That's why it's so popular. It's funny and it's convenient. I guess that's two reasons. But every day I read this thing and everybody who I've referred this to, which is another piece, the word of mouth on this thing has got to be amazing, loves it also. They read it every day. And it's just a secret sauce of what makes, it's what made newsletters great back in the day. When they were new, people could get information in their inbox every day. Well, then newsletters became boring and stuffing and too many people were doing newsletters. And so people started to unsubscribe from newsletters. And then when newsletters had this bad rap as being just sort of digest, you know, digestible tidbits of stuff you already know or don't really want to know, or it's self-serving. The, cus- the company is creating a self-serving newsletter. Like, here's what's going on in our company. Most clients and customers and consumers don't give a shit what is happening inside of your company. That's why newsletters sort of stopped working. But this isn't, here's what's happening for us. This is what's, here's what's happening in the world and the industry. And here's why you need to care about it. And we're going to deliver it to you in a funny way. The Hustle is not the only company doing this. There's another new newsletter called The Milk Road, which coincidentally, the two founders, Sam Parr uh, and, and, and Sean, uh, somebody, I forget his last name, they are, they are the founders of those two newsletters, and they do a podcast together called My First Million, also a great podcast. Uh, and The Milk Road is the same style podcast. It's funny. It's trendy. But it's in a totally different industry. It's in the crypto space. So it talks all about cryptocurrency and blockchain and what's happening in the crazy world of crypto and blockchain right now and NFTs and things like that. Totally different industry, whereas the hustle doesn't really talk about crypto too much unless something crazy is happening. They talk about business and tech. So totally different industry, different company, different brand. And they, the Milk Road is also successful in what they do, meaning successful uh, they have over 100,000 subscribers based on the last information I got. And they both have the same monetization model, which is sponsors, sponsorships, right? So, so the hustle is a little bit different because they were recently purchased by HubSpot, which means they don't take sponsorships anymore because HubSpot is the one that wants all that attention. So HubSpot sort of sponsors that one now. But the Milk Road still has sponsors in the crypto space. And... I think they're making over a million dollars doing it. Um, the Milk Road. Uh, he, when I was listening to the podcast, they wouldn't share the actual revenue, I don't think. The Milk Road newsletter revenue. Yeah, so over a million dollars a year as of now. Sean, Sean Purry is his name. In just six months, by the way, they only did that in six months. So a million dollars in revenue, ARR, so annual reoccurring revenue or run rate, depending. Yeah, annual run rate uh, uh, in just six months. So the model works. So I have this new format, which I didn't even follow for this podcast. I keep forgetting. But it's to, a way to simply break down these companies that I'm talking about. It's the who, what, when, where, why, and how model. Uh, so the who, Right. Who is the hustle and who's the cons- customer? So the hustle uh, is this business and tech, and the readers are people like me, entrepreneurs, marketers, business geeks, tech, people who like interesting stuff going on in the business world. The what is it's a daily newsletter that you can copy the model, and I'll tell you how in just a little bit. The when is it's daily. The distribution is every single day it goes out. Same with the Milk Road. It's every single day. Uh, when they do it in the morning. So here's a little tip for you, which is send your emails early in the morning because if you can get people to read it, you want to make sure it's in their inbox when they wake up. Most people who are hungry and who hustle, pun intended, read their email early in the morning. Most people got to get right into it and they got to know what's going on, what happened you know, last night and what, all that kind of stuff. So send your emails early in the morning, 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 
you know, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. West Coast time. And then if it's global, obviously, if it's a global newsletter, it doesn't really matter when you send it. But send it early in the morning wherever your focused audience is. The where, email. But here's what I was mentioning earlier about why they post on their website. So when you have an email newsletter, it's an intimate space still. To make it into somebody's inbox is sort of hard to do. To stay in there is n- nearly impossible to do. You've got to have consistent value all the time in your emails to keep somebody from unsubscribing. And if you have a couple of bad emails in a row, you might lose some subscribers, okay? So it's it's hard to get in there and win them over and stay there. Email is now sacred. In fact, there's a company called Superhuman, which is basically taking over. You, you can sign up for it and they take over your email. I know that sounds scary, but they help you clean out the clutter and spend less time in your email. So you got to be really good to be in there. But they also list it on their website because it's a free newsletter. So yes, they want you to subscribe, but if they're also making use of, let's go back to the the website here. They're also making use of, let me get it. there. They're also making use of SEO. So I have this little Ahrefs program I use to measure like SEO and website traffic and stuff like that. So they have a domain rating of 79, which is very good. Um, this is, this doesn't matter. Uh, this one is uh, URL rating, so it's the strength of the target URL, the specific URL. So that's just this exact post. Backlinks, they get a ton of backlinks. So they're building SEO value, which means they're discoverable in Google search engine. So if somebody has not signed up for the newsletter yet, they're still getting customers or rather readers, they're still getting readers who visit the website first, and then they scroll through here. And as you just saw that pop-up that I clicked off, a pop-up shows up if I go to leave and ask me to subscribe to the newsletter. Or right here, you're viewing an email archive of the Hustle newsletter. Join free to receive the five-minute newsletter keeping two million plus innovators in the loop. So they're filling the funnel. I'll say that again. They are filling the Funnel, Marketing 101. Fill your funnel with as many people as you can, and then you filter out the ones that won't eventually be valuable to your business until you have the core group of people who turn into customers, or in this case, sponsorship consumers. You know, they're consuming the the content, the sponsored content or the clicks or whatever of the sponsors who are paying the newsletter to be in there, all right? So you got customers coming in, you have readers coming in through Google, signing up for the newsletter. You have people like me who are recommending the newsletter to other people who are signing up for the newsletter, but they can also go to the website and read it if they don't want to read it in the newsletter. And not to mention, there's other things that they are also uh, promoting. So if you scroll down here, they have another spinoff business. So 2 million readers per day is a lot of people. That's a very engaged audience. So they monetized it originally by selling sponsorships. I think they were doing well over a million dollars a month in sponsorship revenue. And then once the hustle bought them, well, there's a huge chunk of change, 25 million, I think. Did I say that? The hustle bought by HubSpot for 25 to 30 million it looks like was a they didn't they didn't come up with the actual cost but 25 to 30 million uh, so they started this web this other business called trends and trends is they do sort of like what I do on this po- this show or this podcast this show which is they review interesting businesses and trends just like the name industries and they they deliver you data that you can use and apply it to your business now this is a paid program. You sign up for, it's monthly. You sign up for a dollar the first month, and then it goes up to a few dollars after that. So they're promoting people over here. So they're now driving people down the funnel to other things. Uh, the Hustle Daily Show. Okay. So they have, they have their own podcast. So they're asking you to sign up for the podcast here. They have TikTok. So I checked out their TikTok and basically they're just doing either funny TikToks or informational TikToks about some of the content that they're putting in their newsletter. And this is a way that they're engaging people 
it looks like they're going more for consistency. Like the not a ton of views on their videos, but it's it's consistent output, which is actually really good for TikTok. And then you might get one that's like, you know, hits big, gets a million views or something. This one's got two thousand. This one's got seven thousand. This one's got eighty k. Here you go. Here's a one hit big. Um, twenty k. This one hit big. Right. So they're acquiring attention here and then funneling in people into tech news, month, money truths, and internet extras. Subscribe to our free newsletter, thehustle.co. So they're funneling people in through here. Uh, Instagram, I pulled this up, The Hustle Daily. They've got way more followers here, 300,000. And doing some TikTok posts here. Looks like their engagement is decent, actually, for Instagram, whose, I think, engagement is going down. 400 likes, 16 comments, right? So they're funneling people here and at the top, tech news, money truth, internet extras. Good, they're keeping the brand solid. Get business news you need in five minutes or less. And then click here, it probably goes to their website. Oh, they got a link tree. Okay, you can subscribe here. Yeah, so they got a link tree. Oh, so here's a good point. Okay, so we're looking, at how, how do they make money? They make money by sponsorships. Uh, or made money until they got purchased by the HubSpot. So now HubSpot, why did HubSpot purchase them? They purchased them for the attention, but they didn't want to take it over and just rename it to HubSpot's newsletter because that would piss so many people off and uh, they would unsubscribe. If they only featured HubSpot stuff, people would unsubscribe. So what the hustle, what the what HubSpot did is they bought this, kept the hustle intact, and just inserted themselves as the sponsor. So instead of the hustle talking about Budweiser or uh, TechCrunch or I don't, not TechCrunch, but uh, Microsoft or somebody else who was a naming sponsor of that particular uh, edition, they, they now became the sponsor, right? So they're promoting here Inbound 2022, which is HubSpot's conference. If you go to their newsletter, a lot of times uh, if you go to the Hustle's newsletter, a lot of times they will be, there'll be a little snippet in there that says, you know, something like, you know, do you want 25 free email templates? Click here. And it won't say HubSpot, but you click there and it goes over to a HubSpot blog post, right? So HubSpot became the sponsor. They just paid, they just basically said, you know what? We want to be the sponsor of your newsletter forever. So here's $30 million. And it was an amazing, amazing move by HubSpot for sure. Uh, because it's an engage, it, it, it's, it's never going to end as long as the, the value is never going to end because it's daily. That, though, is one of the challenges. So before I get into the challenges, did I hit who, what, when, where, why? So why are they successful? I already sort of covered that, right? It's, it's, it's the fresh, trendy language and, and copywriting mixed with trending news that people care about. That's, that's the why. Um, so as long as they keep refreshing their content, the daily newsletter, they're going to have fans. They're going to have new fans. They're, you know, they're going to have people like me telling their friends and coworkers, you got to go sign up for this newsletter. So they're going to keep growing that way, in my opinion. But the downside, the challenge with running a daily newsletter or a weekly newsletter is that you always have to keep creating. Because once that newsletter goes away, it gets pushed down. Somebody deletes it out of their inbox. It's gone. Now they're waiting for the next newsletter. So it's not necessarily evergreen unless you move it over to a blog where it will live forever. But even then, this style is a news-based newsletter, which means once news becomes sort of outdated, nobody cares anymore. So that is the downside of a newsletter business. So how do you adopt that? So let's get to the last one. How? How do you adopt this or adapt this to your business to make you more uh, get you more attention, make you more profitable? How do you make this work as a tactic? So at Good Monster, I love this model so much that we actually have, I think, two or three proposals out to current and new clients to actually do this for them, to help them create a newsletter and join it in with their content marketing and even social media. It's going to be a hard challenge, but here's how we're approaching it. So we have one prospect who's in the venture capital space, Okay, we have another pro. Well, t actually, we have two. We have two prospects in the capital, the venture capital space that we have. Pr uh, we're promoting this for. We're, we're actually going to be doing this for me, my personal brand, jtimmerman.com, a blog I have. 
which is basically the sole goal of it is to build my authority. So people hire our ad agency, good monster. Um, so we're going to be doing this for my personal brand. It's going to be called the Rhino, the newsletter. And uh, the other one is actually in Brazil. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the um, what the other business is. I don't know if enough details to mention it. But with the first two in the venture capital space, the way we're approaching this is that we're saying, listen, in the venture capital space. What's the goal of a venture capital company or an organization like the ones that we're doing? Their goal, they actually have two goals. One of their goals is to get attention to raise money um, from investors. That's the goal of one of them because they have more investable businesses than they know what to do with. So they need more capital. That's their goal. The other one, their goal is to promote, they're a nonprofit. They're not a venture capital fund. They're a, they're a venture capital organization. And their goal is to get more attention to the jobs available in venture capital and in the startup world in and around upstate New York. So we're approaching it in a similar way. We're presenting that you should do a newsletter that talks about the interesting things going on in the world of startup because most startup newsletters are boring. Most of them are just uh, regurgitations of blog posts. So it's a flip. Instead of being a newsletter first that you post on a blog, most newsletters are blogs that just automatically get fed into a newsletter. So by creating a unique experience in the newsletter first, you can get people to pay attention to one of the most sacred places on the internet, which is somebody's email inbox. And so what we're presenting to them is, how is this going to be valuable? Well, you're going to, you have so many companies in your either portfolio or your world or you know your network that are doing interesting things. So what you have to do and what we're presenting to do is communicate early on with all of those businesses, those startups, those investors, those organizations, and say, listen, we're starting a daily newsletter. And what we want to do is we want to feature the coolest shit that's going on. So here's what we need you to do. We're going to reach out. We're going to have one of our representatives reach out every week to you. And we're going to say, please write one sentence of something cool that's going on. And if you have any data to support it, do so. Let's say there's a thousand of these people that we reach out to, which would be an automated email, basically. Let's say 10 of them reply. Okay, that's 10 little snippets that we can go through. And then we can pick five of them and we can write little snippets in the email newsletter of the most interesting thing. And if we copy the model of the hustle, which is humor and valuable information and, and even go one step further and how can somebody apply that what's happening to their business or why is it important, that is something people will read. And you will build your brand as being an authority for things going on in the startup world in New York. How is this going to drive actual results? Well, for the first one, the results is, um, investors are constantly looking for opportunities. If they've got a bunch of money, they're looking for opportunities. Now, if we're headed into a recession, they might be holding on to some of that cash, but they're generally looking for opportunities. And so every once in a while in your newsletter or every single newsletter at the bottom or embedded into it, um, company X, Y, and Z is looking for investors to join our investor network to... Um, you know, to help support while generating income returns on, you know, New York's greatest startups, whatever, blah, blah, blah. The other one can say, if you're interested in a job in, um, in the startup world or the tech world, uh, check out our latest, our, our portfolio companies or our company networks, latest job postings it can be in every newsletter. So you're still getting the call to action in there. What I'm going to be doing for my newsletter called The Rhino is very similar. It's going to be the same kind of stuff I talk about here. It's cool businesses and and uh, peppering in marketing strategies as they fit. Uh, but the call to action in most of our newsletters are going to be, are you sick of doing your own marketing or trying to figure out marketing with so many different things like social media and SEO and all this kind of stuff? Just hire my agency. We've worked with clients like Amazon and Google and Toyota and Samsung and challenger brands like Radius. We can just do it for you. That's one call to action, okay? That's probably going to be the main call to action with some sub call to actions like, hey, subscribe to my podcast or check me out on YouTube. That's it, okay? 
But having that little call to action is sort of like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, if you know who he is. He wrote a book a while ago called Jab, 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 Right, right Hook. And it's basically like you're giving tons of value as the jabs, and then every once in a while you have a right hook, which is the call to action. That's what the HubSpot does. That's what Milk Road does. Um, that's what we're you know going to basically copy the model, and that's what you should do too. Whatever your industry you're in, let's pretend it's farming. If you're in the farming industry, okay, and your target customers are farmers, now first they might not read email as religiously. However, if you promote your newsletter at industry events and expos and to um, to equipment suppliers and the people where farmers are going, farmers have email. Most farmers have email. They need to have email these days, right? So if you promote it and say, yeah, you, whatever, use your personal email, sign up for our newsletter, um, you're, you're going to find a lot of value. And you, f you write it in a way that's funny and humorous to farmers very culturally relevant to farmers and information that they are going to care about, meaning crop prices, supply prices and things like that, right? Inflation and all the, all the things that they, they're going to care about, they will read it. And then depending on what your business does every once in a while or in the footer of the email or embedded in there somewhere, you can say, hey, uh, why don't you sign up for our service where you get 10% off your equipments, you know, on an annual basis or whatever the thing is you offer. Jab, 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 right hook, right? So you can adopt this for almost any industry. I am a huge fan of the hustle. Two million plus subscribers bought by HubSpot for $30 million. They are doing something right, and I love it. Hey, everyone, thanks for watching. If you found this interesting and you think somebody else would, why don't you share it with them and see if they uh, love this kind of deep dive into business as much as you and I do. And uh, if you are a marketer or an entrepreneur or a business leader, when it comes to marketing, one of the top concerns, according to HubSpot and um, AdAge and AdWeek and all the other advertising, one of the top concerns of marketers is return on investment. How do you track it? How do you prove it? How do you project it? Well, that is exactly what my agency, Good Monster, does every single day for clients around the world like Amazon and Google and Toyota and Samsung and Radius and Bayaba. Uh, we generate ROI and we do it fast before we scale up your marketing. So if you're interested in uh, having somebody help you with this, contact my agency. Just go to Google and search Good Monster Agency. Contact us and somebody on my team will help you out. But until next time, have an amazing day. Talk to you later.